Hello and welcome to Big Picture. I am Vishal Dahiya and today we will talk about Cyclone Funny and how the entire disaster has been managed by various agencies involved. Now, Cyclone Funny had uh, left a trail of destruction across coastal Odisha, but the manner in which this natural disaster was managed uh, has emerged as an example of how timely alerts of uh, changing weather situations preparedness of authorities and public participation can drastically reduce the loss of life, which in this case is 38 as of last count. This is a dramatic transformation from the situation almost two decades ago when thousands of lives were lost during a super cyclone in 1999 in Odisha itself. The transformation has been appreciated globally and now the entire focus is on relief, rehabilitation and rebuilding of infrastructure that has been destroyed by the cyclone. So how did various agencies from both state and the central government carry out this task of minimizing loss of life in this cyclone and what more needs to be done? Also, what are the lessons that we have learned from this? For all these questions, we have with us a panel of distinguished guests today in the studio with me. Let me start by introducing them to you, beginning with Mr. Krishan Mitru. He is a consultant of disaster management and environment with us. Um, we also have with us uh, Dr. Surya, head of uh, Geometeorological Risk Management Division from the National Institute of Disaster Management, that is NIDM. And also joining us is uh, Dr. M. Mahapatra, additional DG of India Meteorological Department, that is uh, IMD. Welcome all of you gentlemen to Rajya Sabha TV studios. Let me begin with you, Mr. Mitru, to try and understand and to give our viewers an overview how severe the cyclone was uh, and how did the entire process work in terms of uh, limiting specifically the loss of life? You see, very significantly, this has been a, a severe cyclonic storm, extremely severe cyclonic storm, uh, which is compared to 1999 uh, cyclonic storm in, the, uh, in Orissa, where 15,000 lives were lost uh, during uh, the previous uh, uh, Filene uh, 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 a cyclone, mm -hmm. 38 lives were lost, and this time again, only 38 lives uh, lost have been reported. Uh, the credit definitely goes uh, to uh, the meteorological department, the advancements in the technology which have been brought in the weather uh, uh, readability is commendable, and they have been able to track uh, a, a cyclone funny. Mm -hmm right from its origin till the time it um, uh, had a landfall and then diverted off northwestwards and uh, with only with the uh, pre-warnings the state government has been able to prepare very well all the d concerned agencies in disaster management they were placed uh, uh, in position mm -hmm. well in time the public was uh, evacuated uh, suitable shelters, cyclone shelters were built in time and uh, supplies provided, etc. All those went into it and it's a commendable job done by the state government. Okay, uh, so various agencies involved and one of them is obviously the uh, meteorological department. Let's bring in uh, Dr. Mahapatra from uh, the IMD. Dr. Mahapatra, uh, everybody would be curious to know as to how you tracked this cyclone, uh, when did it all start, what all processes were involved and how did we come from uh, you know, those days in 1999 to this in 2019 where we can uh, you know, accurately predict uh, the movement or track it such a way that uh, you know, loss of lives can be limited to such extent. If I correctly remember, um on 18th of uh, April, while analyzing the various uh, model guidance, we could visualize that there is a possibility of development of a low pressure systems uh, towards 25th. And accordingly, we issued on that day an extended range outlook, that is outlook for week one and week two. And in that week one and week two outlook, we mentioned that towards the end of week one and the beginning of week two, there is a possibility of development of a low pressure area over East Equatorial Indian Ocean adjoining South uh, Bay of Bengal and which has got the potential to become a cyclone. So that was the first uh, detection and but that uh, information was not uh, directly communicated to disaster managers but it was put off in our uh, website. Mm -hmm. And uh, thereafter, uh, 
every day uh, as usual we monitor and on 21st we gave our first statement in our uh, regular bulletin that a low pressure area is likely to develop on 26th around 26th and um, on 23rd, we told that it has got the potential to become cyclone mm -hmm. and to move northwestwards. And by 25th, as per our expectation, the low pressure area formed and became depression on 26th. We started our regular bulletins from 25th. First press release we issued on 25th of April, indicating that a system is forming, which has got the potential to become a cyclone. Okay. Then from 26th, we started our regular three hourly or six hourly bulletin with the formation of a depression in the morning. There we indicated that it is moving northwestwards, but you will be happy to know that we did not warn any state at that time because we could find that it will not cross neither Tamil Nadu nor Andhra Pradesh. So we are just following, everybody is asking whether we are giving landfall. We told no, we are still monitoring. Then on 29th evening, for the first time, we indicated that it is going to be an extremely severe cyclone storm and it will cross Odisha coast. Okay. So that is the first bulletin going to Odisha state that it is going to cross. At the same time, we indicated that adjoining areas of North Andhra Pradesh also will be affected by this cyclone. So we included two, three districts of Andhra Pradesh. So almost after two weeks of tracking, you finally yes. you know, came to a conclusion that this yes. is where it will hit. Yes. Then on 30th morning, we specifically mentioned to the government and to media that it is going to cross Puri. So that means more than 72 hours in advance, we specifically told that cyclone is going to cross Puri with a wind speed of 175 to 185 kmph, gusting to 205 kmph. And finally, it crossed with that wind speed and it crossed that point. Okay. So that was the period, that lead period, which enabled, as uh, Saab told, the disaster managers, general public, and other users to be prepared. Okay, so that was a very crucial aspect of it, you know, three days, almost yes. 72 hours of that lead period. Dr. Surya, I would like to bring you in here. With, you know, that amount of lead period uh, at their disposal, the disaster managers, uh, that is the several agencies uh, from both the centre and the state government uh, and, and the general public as well, because they know in advance, but it has to be done in a proper manner, in an orderly manner as well. So how was it all achieved? Uh, and, and, you know, what all are the processes involved, agencies involved here? How do they work in tandem with each other? Actually, there is a disaster management system which has been worked out by our National Disaster Management Authority, chaired by Honorable Prime Minister. And in this system, actually, the uh, top is a National Crisis Management Committee, chaired by the Cabinet Secretary himself, who had actually uh, got all the information from the nodal agency, which is uh, uh, Indian Meteorological Department. And based on the information which has been received and the likely impacts on the people, properties and uh, the infrastructure, mm -hmm. uh, the NCMC took a review. Uh, in the Ministry of Home Affairs, there is a disaster management division which collects all the information from the uh, states okay. and then provides it to the NCMC and NCMC calls all the uh, relevant uh, stakeholders from the different ministries and departments as well as the states and they uh, conduct the meetings and then decide the proper line of actions mm -hmm. to be taken to avoid, to avoid, to reduce the risks likely to happen in case of uh, that event hitting the people okay. or the properties. So in the states, we have a Department of Revenue and Disaster Management led by Normal Relief Commissioner or Secretary Revenue and Disaster Management. In the current situation uh, in some of the states, the additional Chief Secretary Home was also given the responsibilities. And uh, these uh, systems, uh, we have other uh, stakeholders also which has been actually planned as part of disaster management plan at the state levels mm -hmm. and at the national level. So uh, early warning agencies and response agencies all are pre-decided and uh, we have a specialized skilled equipped uh, human resources in terms of national disaster response force which are also pre-positioned as per requirements in the state based on the situation assessed by IMD. And then uh, all the resources are deployed and uh, try to minimize whatever risks. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Mitru, on, you know, the aspect of the very fact that, uh, you know, this particular management of this particular disaster 
has been appreciated globally by uh, United Nations, by other countries as well. From your point of view, and you mentioned the 1999 uh, super cyclone as well, what has changed from 99 till 2000, uh, uh, you know, 19 here in two decades? Obviously, you know, uh, early warning systems and uh, IMDs, uh, first and information and a period of almost 72 hours is one. But for these agencies which are working on ground, something must have changed there as well, the way they work efficiently. How did it work? You see, earlier, India was a, a reactive country to disasters, any kind of disaster. We only planned for, we only looked forward to uh, earthquake uh, or fire or maybe floods. Such were the uh, disasters we were looking for always. And the job was assigned to the Ministry of Agriculture. Till uh, about uh, uh, end 70s or early 80s, uh, uh, a committee was formed under uh, K.C. Panth, Mr. K.C. Panth, mm -hmm. and uh, 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 a holistic view of disaster management was taken in that. Now, it evolved that we need to establish, we need to gear up the disaster management system for all the disasters uh, under one head. Okay. A followed up, disaster management authority was formed under the chairmanship of Honorable Prime Minister and uh, National Disaster uh, Management Institute, mm -hmm. NIDM, National Institute of Disaster, was also formed along with the uh, distribution down the state and to, into the district level. Thereafter, we formed proper educational uh, uh, curriculum okay. where people were trained to be disaster managers uh, at uh, the NDMA plus uh, institutes uh, like uh, uh, Indraprastha University in Delhi. Also, Red Cross was taking very active part in the whole uh, development of disaster mm -hmm. management in India. In 2005, Disaster Management Act was uh, 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 established and uh, we started following certain guidelines which were formed by NDMA and NIDM. Mm -hmm. And today, with that and with advancement of technology, improvement of technology, we have seen where technology was deployed, like in Uttarakhand. We had the technology, we did not deploy it, therefore the warnings did not come in time. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, in other places, um, in, in the east coast, along the east coast, the technology has been fully deployed and we have seen, uh, example is Orissa, who have reacted so very well that they have uh, managed the three principles of uh, disaster management. That is planning, preparedness, prevention and practice. These four uh, uh, principles of disaster management have been enacted by Orissa government, I think the best uh, in the country, uh, next to uh, uh, Gujarat and Maharashtra. I would uh, uh, suggest that other states also take up so seriously as Orissa has taken disaster management to improve their state of uh, disaster preparedness. And uh, unless we do that, we are going to have more and more disasters, uh, the more and more losses. Mm -hmm. we, will, uh, we need to protect lives. We need to protect the properties. We need to protect the environment. Okay. So basically what you're saying is that the way, uh, you know, the agencies have reacted in this particular uh, incident uh, is, is something which needs to be emulated by others as well. Let me bring in, uh, you know, Dr. Mahapatra once again, since uh, you talked about four principles of uh, disaster management and the first one is uh, preparedness. Uh, and you get prepared only when you have the advanced information. Therein comes uh, the meteorological department. You explained in detail how you guys tracked uh, uh, this super cyclone for almost... Uh, two weeks before coming to a conclusion. Now, what I want to know is, and what people would also want to very, uh, very much uh, want to be, uh, you know, uh, knowing here, is that uh, what kind of technology was being used? Is it because of the advancement in technology or is there some other form, you know, uh, format of planning which uh, goes in here, which ensures that uh, we had this uh, beforehand information? Yeah. Early warning is key to preparedness. So, therefore, uh, there was a... Uh, survey for the South Asian countries uh, by uh, Asian Disaster Preparedness Center 
And there also it was found that um, if you can improve the early warning in the least developed countries or developing countries, then you can very well manage the disasters. Because here you cannot change the socio-economic conditions easily, but you can improve the early warning. Considering mm -hmm. this, India Metallurgy Department took up the modernization program uh, with Minister of Art Sciences, and it was taken off in 2008. And um, the fruits which are uh, seen nowadays, from starting from 2013, we saw. Actually, we came with a better and better forecast from 2009 onwards. So, um, technology is the major intervention when you go for upgrading the early warning systems. Okay. Then, when I say technology, actually, these are uh, especially the Doppler radars. Now, in 2004 or 5, we got only four Doppler radars. Now we've got 27 Doppler radars in okay. the country. And the entire coastal belt is now Doppler radars, covered by Doppler radars, which is not the case earlier. Especially in the last five years, all states have the Doppler radars in the coast. Doppler radars are favorable because they can detect the center better. They can find out the structure of the cyclones. They can also find out the movement when it comes inside the radar range. But unfortunately, radar can detect only maximum up to 400 kilometers or so from the coast. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the first and foremost requirement becomes the satellite uh, technology. Satellite technology in India has improved significantly with uh, Indian space research organizations. At present, we have got through geostationary satellites, Insat 3D and Insat 3DR. These two are cascaded in such a manner that every 15 minutes we get observations from the satellites about the image of the cyclones, etc. Okay. Also, we have got another satellite called a CATSAT, which can provide you the ocean surface wind. But however, these are all the remotely sensed observations from the top. You need some ground truth. In Minister of Earth Sciences, there is National Institute of Ocean Technology, which has deployed 20 floating buoys, meteorological buoys. These are the platforms where you can have the temperature, pressure, wind observations, and sea surface. And these observations are fed in numerical models. Okay. The next one is the automated weather stations. These are equipped with the sensors which can every 15 minutes, every one hour can take the observations. Okay. Now, Minister of Earth Sciences has gone to deploy 20 ships along the coast. We can take observations every hourly with the automated weather stations. Now, based on all these observations, your uh, game plan is not over. These observations should be utilized in an effective manner in the numerical models. So you have to go for a better technique to assimilate all the observations, to go for a better technology to communicate in real time. So what we have done actually in recent years, we have modernized each and every aspect of the early warning system, starting with observations with all these type of observations, starting with the communication, the fastest mode of communication it has, we have at present. Okay. Then also we have got the analysis platform. Earlier it was a manual, you were asking about uh, Odisha Super Cycle 99, mm -hmm. at that time it was a manual analysis by the human being. So it was subject to error, it was delayed and decision was not perfect. But nowadays you have got a digitized forecasting platform when you can comprehend, compare and analyze all types of observations from various direct sources or remoting sources. In addition to that, also what we have done actually, the data, you can imagine, 60 GB data is being assimilated in various numerical weather prediction models at a time. Mm -hmm. So it is required for, the, for that purpose a high power computing system. Now you'll be happy to know that India is the third power in terms of the high power computing system. We have got about eight petaflop computing facility. That means in uh, one second, you can have eight into 10 to the 15 mathematical operations in that computer. Uh, that's huge. So it is, yes. So that is in that sense. Okay. Then based on this, in 2018, we introduced two models, which has got a resolution of 12 kilometers. It can provide forecast for every 12 kilometers globally, okay. and up to 10 days. Okay. Not only that, in addition to that, what we did actually, we introduced another model by just varying the initial conditions, that is called the ensemble condition system, uh -huh. that is also the capacity to provide 10 days forecast. Okay. So you have got now in Ministry of Art Sciences, about six models on its own. Okay, then so th that's that's yeah. that's quite a you know a lot of uh, uh, ways and techniques. Uh, yeah. One thing which uh, is a common thread here is uh, assimilation of real time data and uh, you know uh, to go ahead and read and understand that data and communicate it properly as well. Dr. Surya, uh, once that is being done, as has been you know very clearly explained uh, by uh, Dr. Mahapatra here. Ha, then it is up to uh, the uh, agencies which are working on the ground, uh, you know, those which are planning uh, the entire uh, relief operations uh, and uh, overlooking at uh, uh, the entire operations of how to go ahead and deal with uh, that uh, uh, landfall of uh, these kind of cyclones. 
Yeah, actually, uh, this information which is received from IMD as a nodal agency, uh, they are also providing the likely impacts in terms of impact based warning. And uh, based on these expected impacts on the properties, infrastructure, and the people, uh, the planning uh, is done uh, in advance mm -hmm. so that uh, the people are uh, least affected. You can see the operation in Fani. More than 13 lakh people ha, uh, has been uh, evacuated uh, for their safety uh, uh, during this operation. So the, these people are taken to the safer sites in the safer shelters so that they don't get affected. Okay. And similarly, all other uh, arrangements are made for them for their food, water, medical service uh, requirements, and so on. Okay. So all this is well taken care, and for this uh, all. Uh, funds are made available to the states. Government of India already provided okay. funds from uh, the NDRF, National Disaster Response Fund, as part of SDRF. And some of these funds were already available with the states. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mitru, a concluding comment from you, uh, and I'm taking it from uh, your previous answer where you said that, you know, all other agencies and all other states uh, uh, or maybe other nations as well need to go ahead and replicate this model here. But uh, there, there is always a scope for doing more in terms of... Uh, the technological advancement as well as planning also. The kind of technology which we have right now is uh, much better than what we had in 1999. So one is obviously the way technology will advance will be much better. But what else apart from that to ensure that we improve it further? Uh, you see when uh, the present government, uh, well I would say BJP government when they took over in 2014, I wrote an appreciation note to uh, the Prime Minister, who was the Chairman of Disaster Management Authority. Uh, in that, what I had perceived was that we have come of age when different agencies have now uh, achieved some level of perfection and there needs to be uh, a, a, an integration mm -hmm. between all these agencies. We find that uh, our neighboring countries like Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Pakistan and uh, I think Nepal have uh, ministries for disaster management. Uh -huh. We have many agencies who are autonomous and working on their own. What would happen if we can combine all these efforts under one head, Ministry of Disaster and uh, Environment Management? Okay. My recommendation is that. Okay, so clearly, as uh, our panelists have pointed out, uh, that this entire process uh, of ensuring that the loss of life uh, in this particular super cyclone which hit Odisha can be minimalized uh, included uh, a lot of processes, a lot of technology, and a lot of manpower involved, uh, you know, which was trying to sort out the real-time data, analyze it, communicate it properly. And as our panelists are pointing out, there's always a scope for improvement, both in terms of technology as well as in terms of techniques and planning, which is being used to tackle such natural disasters. We'll come back again tomorrow with a different topic, different set of guests. Till then, keep watching Rajasabha Television.